Welcome to Whiteboard Friday. It's a new week and a new angle for our whiteboard. This is innovation, folks. This week we're talking about trap, neuter, return. So this is the SPCA's policy where they trap stray cats new to them and return them into stray cat colonies. So this is a policy that Maggie Barry has, was speaking yesterday at Zealandia about and has come out against this policy of trap, neuter, return. Now first up, if you're wondering what a colony of stray cats looks like, well we actually got some footage from the Wellington region. So this is under the house of a Wellington resident. There was a stray cat colony near this house and the woman uh, who lived there was feeling sorry for the cats, decided to start feeding them out of the goodness of her own heart and of course the problem just multiplied from there. So let's hear what Maggie Barry had to say about this issue. I think it's one of the most foolish and counterproductive techniques I've ever heard. She goes on to say, cats that have been spayed and released are a big problem. If the SPCA capture wild cats, they should be put down in a humane way or they should offer them to people. John Key's response was to have a conversation with his cat. The SPCA's response is that they are looking to see how the, native, the welfare of native birds could be alongside that of stray cats and dogs. It's a little bit like walking into the Gaza Strip and saying, kumbaya guys, can't we just get along? Well, actually we know the evidence on this policy of trap neuter return because the New Zealand Vets Association have done a major study looking at all the international evidence on it. Let's hear what they found. Trap neuter return would not be a judicious strategy for the majority of stray cats, as it is costly, does not stop predation of wildlife by cats, and has little effect on the spread of diseases. They go on to say there's also little evidence that clearly shows TNR improves cat welfare or results in a population decline on a broad scale. Let's have a quick look at the numbers behind the work that the uh, NZ Vets Association has done. And the key number you need to know is that actually, cats breed really fast. A couple of cats can very quickly, within a year, have 12 kittens, and that goes on exponential. So that's three litters, uh, totaling about 12 kittens over a year. So New Zealand has somewhere between 200,000 and 1 million stray cats in the country. Some people think it's probably more at the top end. In Rotorua alone, the SPCA has said that there are roughly 40 to 50,000 stray cats. These are unknown cats hanging around towns. And because cats breed so quickly, to manage these sorts of numbers, these sorts of uh, populations of cats, you need to neuter roughly 90% of the population. Now the SPCA's current trap neuter return policy only neuters a small fraction of these, a tiny fraction of these, so we're nowhere near the level that is needed to get the cat population under control. Again, another figure from uh, an Auckland cat charity is that they estimate that there are one million unowned kittens born every year in Auckland. Very sadly, the majority of these die. So the SPCA's trap, neuter, return policy really just pushes the stray cat problem onto other charities. We know that because, again, this same Auckland charity roughly takes care of 9,000 stray cats per year, and they are really just scratching at the surface. So you can see that trap, neuter, return on a, on a, cannot reduce the cat population on a broad scale. It really can't deal with the scale of the stray cat population simply because you have to neuter 90% of cats to have any impact. Otherwise, they will just keep breeding. And to make matters worse, in a lot of these colonies, they are feeding these stray cats, which of course just attracts more stray cats and allows them to breed even more. So you need a lot of people a lot of crazy cat ladies to manage these stray colonies and to make them very effective. And certain, there are certain studies which shown that they have been effective on a very small scale in the United States, but again, they need a lot of people monitoring these cats to make sure that, they are, that enough of them are sufficiently you know, uh, spayed or neutered and that they are properly looked after. So it's incredibly expensive. 
that's the NZVA's other point. In fact, one study shows that it is cheaper to pay people to euthanize cats than it is to have an army of volunteers operating tra trap, neuter, and return. Sadly, it is just a far cheaper way to get our stray cat population under control. You know, this, this trap, neuter, return policy is also bad for cats. It's bad for pet cats because these stray cats spread disease. And also the life that these stray cats have is often punctuated by disease, accidents, and fights between them. So their welfare is not that great either. It's bad for cats, and that's why a lot of cat-loving societies actually say that every cat should be an own cat, or as we say, every cat should be in a lap. No problem with cats in general, but we should definitely make sure that they're all owned and that, res and that owners are responsible with them. And finally, trap need to return is unequivocally bad for wildlife. After all, these cats may be neutered, but it doesn't stop them from hunting. As a famous advocate in the United States pointed out, we're not worried about these cats making love to native wildlife. We're worried about them killing our native wildlife. So neutering them does not help in that respect. And it's no point wishful thinking that these guys, these cats, don't kill our native wildlife. So sorry, SPCA, but it's time to end trap neuter return. It doesn't reduce the population, it's expensive, it's bad for cats, and it's bad for our native wildlife.